We're joined now by Scott Dixon here at News Talk ZB. Scott, of course, has uh, put his number nine car on uh, in second place in the grid for the upcoming Indy, uh, which is what first thing on Monday morning at New Zealand time. Big week for you, Scott. Uh, welcome to News Talk ZB. How are you feeling? I mean, you've done this a million times before. Huge difference around the fact there's no crowd, but what about the general build-up? Yeah, I think that, you know, it's definitely very different. You know, Indianapolis, I think, is all about the people. It's all about the the celebration of what typically is, you know, the month of May and, and uh, you know, the generations sitting in the same seats for, you know, so many years to the stories to, you know, the people that kind of skip work that whole, you know, two or three week period and come out and, and, and sit out of the track and, and drink beers, you know. So it's it's definitely changed. It's been very airy. It's very quiet out there. It kind of feels like a typical, you know, September, October tire test that we do there kind of later in the year. But, um, you know, the city is still really behind it. You know, there's checkered flags and, you know, everybody's homes and out on, you know, their front lawns and, and you know, the typical kind of Indy 500, you know, build up. So, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Like the city itself is quite busy, uh, especially the northern parts like Carmel and, and some of those areas. You wouldn't even really know that there's a pandemic going on. Uh, yet, you know, uh, kind of down by city center and, and uh, circle center in, in Indianapolis, it's very quiet and very uh, kind of uh, weird. But um, yeah, the, the build up's been good. You know, the the, the number nine uh, PNC Bank uh, Honda has been strong. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we missed, I think, just by uh, less than less than maybe, I, don't know, I think it was two feet over 10 miles is where we got beat by. So it was definitely pretty close. Uh, you've been very happy with the performance of the Honda, considering the uh, some of the soothsaying going on that uh, it was going to pretty much be a, a Penske run event and you guys weren't going to come even close. So where was the lift, do you think, over the last week or so, the last couple of weeks? Yeah, it's kind of crazy, I think, with, with when you look at, you know, uh, the engine formula hasn't changed now. I think this is the fifth or sixth year, so they're, they're very mature engines as far as development and areas that you can kind of increase power. Um, the difference this year is, you know, the aero screen and then with the addition of the aero screen and the drag, they kind of moved the boost levels. So, you know, there's three kind of boost levels. You have Super Speedway 130, uh, short track ovals used to be 140 and qualifying for Indianapolis. And now we actually qualify on road course boost at, at, at 150. So I think uh, it seems that Honda kind of had a little bit of an advantage in that area, but they worked extremely hard in, in finding performance out of the engine over the, you know, the last, uh, you know, I guess, you know, 12 months um, or more. Um, but I think, you know, it's it's kind of um, caught GM off pen, you know, off, you know, they've just put them off a little bit. I think there was only one maybe in the top 15 or two maybe in the top 15. Uh, so it's, it's definitely a shift, I think, with what we've seen. You know, I think last year they dominated the Fast 9 uh, with 7 to 2. Uh, this year there was only one in the Fast 9. So, yeah, it's definitely been a bit of a flip uh, in, in performance-wise. But, on the other side of that too, they seem to be a lot closer in race trim. So I expect the Penske's and, and you know the majority of uh, you know the Chevrolets to be very strong again. That's all very well and good to be starting up pretty much on the front row of the grid there, but it's where you finish more to the point. But how handy is it for you to actually get up and running and I suppose get away from the traffic, get away from the chaos and the opening handful of laps? Yeah, you, you know, you said it. I think it is basically trying to, you know, clear yourself of those first lap or, or even the first couple of stints of, of somebody making a mistake and getting collected up in, in, in some issue uh, as we've, you know, been involved in, in the past. But uh, it also helps the, the things like, you know, uh, pit, you know, your pit box and where you are, you know, will be in the second position. It gets pretty chaotic. You know, the Indianapolis uh, pit lane is very long, but it's it's very narrow. You can barely get two cars side by side. So when you're in that middle pack there around 18th or 20th, and that's where your pit box is, it gets very stressful, you know, when you have these yellow flag uh, exchanges. Um, and a lot of times you will see many people crash in pit lanes. So it's kind of things like that that kind of get you, you know, out of that trouble. And hopefully we can stay out front and, and you know, uh, be be in uh, with a win, you know, with about 30 laps to go. As far as uh, restrictions around what you and the pit crew can actually do when you talk about things like you're doing your gas and, uh, and doing your boots and the like as well, do you get much time to actually practice that, to, to be all together as one with the restrictions around India at the moment? What, what do they extend to? Yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's a little odd um, with restrictions throughout throughout America, right? You know, some states are pretty, pretty uh, tight, uh, depending on, you know, the case numbers and things like that. And it's kind of been a bit rolling through Indianapolis. Um, you know, I think 
as long as you're wearing face coverings or face masks. Um, you know, the NCT IndyCar series has been very strong on the protocol with, you know, the health checks coming into the circuit. And we're kind of like in our own bubble. You know, there's probably three, 400 people that, uh, you know, do work closely together. Um, but, you know, no teams really interact. Even, you know, the trucks where we have set up normally six or seven in a row um, is normally our compound for us. We really only allow about six people in each truck at, at, at any single time. And the offices have been, you know, we would have engineering meetings with 20 to 25 people in those rooms. Now we're only doing it on, you know, Zoom or, or you know, Microsoft Teams, and you're only allowing five people in a room. So, you know, there, there are a lot of protocols that are in place and you're not really allowed to mix too much. So that does separate it. It makes, it makes a lot of the, um, you know, uh, the talks and strategy and, and you know, uh, kind of the, the end of day uh, meetings to try and talk about how the car is, it, it becomes quite difficult because you don't have that natural correspondence between people and, and you know, that kind of thing. So that, that has been difficult. Um, but again, man, we're super lucky to be able to be racing right now and carry on with, uh, with our jobs and, and our dreams. What about the streamlining of the whole operation from a Chip Ganassi point of view and from an IndyCar point of view, now that you've operated under these pretty lean circumstances, does that uh, nod toward maybe the ability to do that in the future, cutting costs, maybe just streamlining as I said, what, what do you think about that? I think IndyCar is extremely affordable compared to, you know, the likes of, of Formula One, even sports car racing. I think from what, what it was when I first joined in, in the early 2000s, um, you know, the budgets have are probably, I don't know, I, you know, I might be spe speaking out of hand, but I'd say a quarter, maybe a fifth of what they used to be. Um, just in, you know, when the big manufacturers were, were all in and spending tons of money, you know, the updates, you would have aero updates every other weekend. You would have, you know, three engines on a weekend. Now we have this season, we're only using three engines. So, you know, there is a lot of cost cuts. Tires were the same way. You know, we used to have 12 or more sets. Now we're cut down to, you know, maybe eight sets on a, on a, on a typical race weekend. Indianapolis is 30, but that was from 36 last year. So, you know, there are a lot of areas where I think, um, you know, Texas was a good example for many years. We had talked about Texas should be a one day event. And, and this gave us the opportunity to try it, even though it was extremely tiring and stressful. Uh, it shows you that you can do it. So I do see things, you know, a lot of two-day events being uh, instead of three-day uh, and cutting down on hotels and travel and all that kind of stuff. I do see that maybe becoming you know, part of the norm. Uh, you mentioned uh, tyres and the boots. You've got, what, 30 for the entire week? How long does that last for? Uh, and, and how do you go about working your tyres? You're an experienced man and around Indy now. Does that give you much more of an advantage? Um, so you, 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 you typically bank on for the race, you know, I think, uh, you can do it in five or six stops, you know, so you need six or seven sets of tires. I think you, you, you typically hold on to nine or 10 sets just for the race. So that gives you 20 sets, <clears throat> you know, for race running and also qualifying. Qualifying is definitely where you can burn some sets up, man. You know, some days you can, you can go through eight or 10 sets, just, uh, you know, just trying to get the car right or, or if you're really struggling. So, you know, it's, it's really, uh, that kind of is what limits our track time is the tires, you know? So this year we, we definitely had maybe 10 hours less of track time, I think, as far as practice. Um, you know, so the, 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 the reduction in six sets of tires was probably called for. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you, it's nice actually for us to actually, have this period of last week where we've been able to test and kind of decompress and look at data and, and talk about it because a lot of the weekends that we've had just uh, in the recent past, it's just been flat out. You know, you have no time to look at anything. It's just been go, go, go. But uh, yeah, the five stand tires are great and, and, you know, you can get 30, you know, almost 40 laps out of a set, which at Indianapolis is, is a ton of miles. Um, and then qualifying though, you, you, you get after them pretty hard with the six light run there. How important, Scott Dixon, is it that uh, you collude with your teammates? Plainly very. How does that work now with the amount of teammates you've got and where they actually position uh, in the race on the starting grid? Yeah, I think uh, once it gets to the race, there's, there's, you know, every every team is at it for themselves, you know, and, and you, you know, you will be kinder to your teammates as far as, uh, you know, placement on track and giving them a little bit more room. But, you know, uh, I think all of it is in the preparation and, and it's hard when, when a new member joins because you're trying to work out <clears throat> what differences they like, you know, no driver is really the same, you know, I've, I've been lucky in the past with some that you could kind of align a little bit more uh, with, you know, Dario and I kind of worked out a pattern pretty quickly if, you know, the nine car did this, then the 10 car would do that. And, 
and Felix and I are starting to do that after a full year and, and a little bit more uh, time. Marcus is quite different and, and does his, you know, a bit of his own thing at the moment, um, finding his way. So, you know, every, uh, every car uh, in the same team and, and running, you know, on track is, is definitely, you know, hugely uh, helpful as far as data and, and trying to, you know, get through test items and test lists, especially if it's, you know, basic aero trims and things like that. Uh, but yeah, every driver is a little bit different. So, you know, this is the, the period where you try to work out these patterns so you can understand, you know, if one goes that way, then the other needs to do this. And you have the whip hand, I take it, considering the experience you've got, how long you've been around and, and who you are. Do you get to throw your weight around a wee bit here, Scott? No, no, no. It's, uh, it's you know, uh, teamwork makes the dream work, man. So you gotta, you got to be open-minded. And, and for me, I think the biggest thing in this sport is, is knowing and, and going into each weekend, making sure you don't think you know everything, you know, and that's the biggest thing. you got to go in with an open mind. Um, you know, sometimes you get spanked by your teammates and you got to figure out why they're doing it and how they're doing it. And, and, you know, I think this team is very strong on being very open um, you know, and that's where Marcus and, and uh, you know, Felix are very good. You know, we get on very well. Uh, we went for a long cycle today, you know, and you're just, it's just nice to be able to, you know, refresh and talk about, you know, things openly, whereas some teams and formats and even some teammates in the past, it can get quite difficult because they, they do like to keep things, you know, close to their chest. But um, I think you've got to be open. You've got to work together and, and uh, you know, make sure that, you know, you can better everybody in the team, you know, to, to go on and try and win championships. Scott, there have been periods in IndyCar where the influx of rookies has been problematic, to put it nicely, I suppose. What about over the last year or two? How have you felt the younger drivers sort of have dealt with coming in to IndyCar from, a, I suppose, a spectator's point of view? It looks like they've handled it a lot better. There's a lot more responsibility, a lot more grace going on in the pack. Is that the same with what you're seeing? Yeah, I think so. You know, it. it uh, I think the last couple of years, uh, you know, the rookie crop has been very strong. If you look at the likes of, you know, Marcus or, you know, Felix, um, and this year with, you know, uh, VK, um, you know, he, you know, they, they've done, you know, Palau's done an extremely good job. He's already had his first podium and they were, you know, both, I think, actually in the fast nine, you know, which, you know, they had veterans on their teams that have been doing this for many years and been very competitive and, and sat on the polls, you know, the pole many a times and they weren't able to. So, um, you know, the, the talent is, is really strong in IndyCar right now. The competition is just so tight. So, uh, you know, between the teams for one, but also the drivers. So, yeah, no, no real, um, you know, worry, I think, with, with any of the drivers on the grid. I think everybody is extremely respectful. Everybody knows the consequence of, of you know, especially in IndyCar racing, it's, it's fine to go NASCAR or GT racing and you get involved in crashes here and there, but uh, the stakes are definitely a lot higher in IndyCar racing, especially at Super Speedways. You got any uh, messages for the folks back at home and around the Auckland region still uh, under lockdown, as you well know, not as much freedom as you like. Got any messages for you all out there? Uh, be safe and be well. You know, I probably can't give any advice. You know, I'm, I'm living in America where it's, it's really pretty much just have at it. So, um, you know, it's, I think, you know, New Zealand's been doing a fantastic job. It's definitely been uh, one that's made a lot of news over here just for the sheer fact of that they take it really seriously and they, they've been trying to contain it. Um, and you've seen many different countries throughout the world take a, a very different, uh, you know, tone to that. So, um, yeah, be safe, be healthy. I hope I can get down sometime soon. My dad has actually been in hospital for, for 10 plus weeks and, and uh, it's been, you know, uh, haven't been able to get down to see him and, and uh, want to wish all my family uh, the best of uh, you know, this lockdown and, and I hope everybody remains safe and, and look forward to trying to get back to New Zealand sometime here soon. Pretty easy for me to be locked down come Monday morning New Zealand time. I know exactly what I'll be doing. And just before we go, the three trophies are behind you there. What are they for? Uh, there's a, yeah, a couple more. That's three of the five championships. And then, uh, there's a Borg Warner and a couple of, yeah, there's a couple of other ones up there somewhere, maybe. Oh, the Borg Warner. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the baby Borg. So yeah, there's, this 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 is the only place I can have any kind of racing stuff. There's nothing else in the house. So I have my little trophies there. It's the, the place that Emma lets me have it. But yeah, it's great too that they moved the, the race time for the Indy 500. It's a little bit later. So nobody... In New Zealand has to get up uh, the typical 3 or 4 a.m. 4 so, uh, yeah, hopefully everybody can watch it, tune in, and cheer on that number nine. <laughs>